Doctrine and Covenants, Section 84, Part 1 A Revelation of Jesus Christ unto His Servant, Joseph Smith, Jr., and six elders, as they united their hearts and lifted their voices on high. Yea, the word of the Lord concerning His church, established in the last days for the restoration of His people, as He has spoken by the mouth of His prophets, and for the gathering of his saints to stand upon Mount Zion, which shall be the city of New Jerusalem, which city shall be built, beginning at the temple lot, which is appointed by the finger of the Lord in the western boundaries of the state of Missouri, and dedicated by the hand of Joseph Smith, Jr., and others with whom the Lord was well pleased. Verily, this is the word of the Lord, that the city, New Jerusalem, shall be built by the gathering of the saints, beginning at this place, even the place of the temple, which temple shall be reared in this generation. For verily, this generation shall not all pass away, until an house shall be built unto the Lord. And a cloud shall rest upon it, which cloud shall be, even the glory of the Lord, which shall fill the house. And the sons of Moses, according to the holy priesthood, which he received under the hand of his father-in-law, Jethro, and Jethro received it under the hand of Caleb, and Caleb received it under the hand of Elihu, and Elihu under the hand of Jeremy and Jeremy under the hand of Gad, and Gad under the hand of Esaias, and Esaias received it under the hand of God. Esaias also lived in the days of Abraham, and was blessed of him, which Abraham received the priesthood from Melchizedek, who received it through the lineage of his fathers even till Noah and from Noah till Enoch, through the lineage of their fathers, and from Enoch to Abel, who was slain by the conspiracy of his brother, who received the priesthood by the commandments of God, by the hand of his father Adam, who was the first man. Which priesthood continueth in the church of God in all generations, and is without beginning of days or end of years. And the Lord confirmed a priesthood also upon Aaron and his seed throughout all their generations, which priesthood also continueth and abideth forever with the priesthood which is after the holiest order of God. And this greater priesthood administereth the gospel and holdeth the key of the mysteries of the kingdom, even the key of the knowledge of God. Therefore, in the ordinances thereof, the power of godliness is manifest. And without the ordinances thereof and the authority of the priesthood, the power of godliness is not manifest unto men in the flesh. For without this, no man can see the face of God, even the Father, and live. Now this Moses plainly taught to the children of Israel in the wilderness, and sought diligently to sanctify his people, that they might behold the face of God. But they hardened their hearts, and could not endure his presence. Therefore the Lord, in his wrath, for his anger was kindled against them, swore that they should not enter into his rest while in the wilderness, which rest is the fullness of his glory. Therefore he took Moses out of their midst, and the holy priesthood also, and the lesser priesthood continued, which priesthood holdeth the key of the ministering of angels and the preparatory gospel, which gospel is the gospel of repentance and of baptism and the remission of sins and the law of carnal commandments, which the Lord in his wrath caused to continue with the house of Aaron among the children of Israel until John, whom God raised up, 
being filled with the Holy Ghost from his mother's womb. For he was baptized while he was yet in his childhood, and was ordained by the angel of God at the time he was eight days old unto this power, to overthrow the kingdom of the Jews, and to make straight the way of the Lord before the face of his people, to prepare them for the coming of the Lord, in whose hand is given all power.